Hi, my name is Josie, and today I want to discuss some of my thoughts and predictions about Matrix 4, The Matrix Resurrections. I am extremely excited for this film, which just came out today. It is the 22nd. I will be seeing the film tomorrow. And so I haven't seen any trailers. I think I've avoided all spoilers. I don't even know what the Rotten Tomato score is. I haven't read any reviews. And so everything I'm about to discuss is purely for fun. Uh, I could be completely wrong. I could be somewhat right. Who knows? This film series has had a profound impact on my life and it's for whatever reason has stayed in my life. And um, just to prove that I am a Matrix fan, this is a pretty old, complete, ultimate box set of DVDs, of literally 10 DVDs. Um, my dad got this for me. It comes with this pretty cool Neo head figurine bust thing. And then also all 10 DVDs. And I believe even at the bottom here, it has a little collectible book as well. So the first part of my thoughts fall into plot predictions. I think that it's reasonable to suspect that there's going to be a significant time jump. Time has passed. We're going to see the world in a, a, a very different state in the future of the Matrix. We can see people coming in and out of the Matrix freely. I think particularly, you know, uh, with today's, you know, virtual reality culture, uh, or is that, you know, maybe being a thing, I think the idea of people living part-time in the real world and part-time in the virtual world is actually already happening. So I think it's reasonable to assume we're going to see stuff inside and outside. Of course, I know that Keanu Reeves uh, and Carrie Ann Moss are both in this film. And how do we... It, the film, of course, is called Resurrections. How do we do that? Well... My thinking is that they will return as artificial intelligence and their digital selves are technically stored in the matrix, at least from the last time they were in the matrix. Think of it like a save point in a game. So even though Trinity does die, in theory, because there's a digital consciousness that may have been saved within the matrix, maybe we can recall that. And then as for Neo, when he, in the third film, of course, dies, his coding, his source code is returned to the source. And so at that point, we can, again, bring him back as an artificial intelligence from those points, which actually means that uh, I, I, th I think they're going to not remember everything. And I think... It opens up a really great opportunity to dig into a lot of the themes from the first Matrix, you know, regarding the red pill and uh, identity, purpose, transformation. As AIs, they are now part man and part machine. And I believe that that's a really cool concept because it's going to make change all their motives. It's going to make the story a lot more layered and interesting to kind of see, well, are they on the man side or are they on the machine side? You know, what does that mean? Now, there is one more thing I should mention. In the second and third films of The Matrix, we did see Smith go actually into physical form. Um, he was able to, uh, you know, to take control of, of another person's body and while I doubt that would happen, I think it's maybe plausible to suggest that maybe Neo and Trinity could enter the real world, maybe through the eyes of like an android. Maybe there's a way for them to download their consciousness into an android or something to that nature. So that way we can have part of the story taking place in the Matrix and another part taking place in the real world. And I really do believe it is going to kind of be both of those things. So here's another question. Who are our heroes and villains? Well, in the original trilogy, the machines were very largely the antagonists and the humans were the protagonists. But 
we saw towards the very end of Revolutions, during in the film Matrix Revolutions, we saw the character of Sati and other AIs that were benevolent, that actually um, we want to actually preserve them. They're actually good. They're not all, it's not so black and white. And I think having the AIs be um, the more more compassionate characters in this one, having um, both good and bad AIs, including the return of Sati, maybe, I think that would be much more interesting. Um, and then as for the humans, there are some humans who may want to stay in the Matrix. There are some who want to completely destroy the Matrix. And I think it'd be a lot more interesting to now sort of say, okay, well, the machines were, were wrong in enslaving us, but is man also wrong in in uh, in uh, wanting to destroy what was created and things like that? Humans and machines will have to work together. So I think we're going to see heroes and villains on both sides. And then one more plot question here. How will the machines survive without humans as batteries? So that's a, a major plot point is because humans blocked out the sun, the machines need power and they can only get that by using our uh, human bodies. How are they going to do that? If everyone leaves the matrix, maybe they won't have a power source. And then a follow up question is how will humans survive on earth without the sun? I predict that there will be a restoration of the sun and the sky. And this will be the major resolution of the whole film. I think it would be a really beautiful visual metaphor. Like, you know, finally we're, we're going from the darkness to the light in the real world. And this is going to bring light, not just to the humans who are now not just in Zion, but all over the world and, and also to the machines because they'll be able to uh, have power and live freely as well. So we will see, but, you know, we got a little glimpse of it in Revolutions. You know, in Trinity, go up into the sky and you can see a little, like for about five to ten seconds, you see the sky and the sun. So uh, that's, I think we could, that could be a really amazing, I mean, frankly, that's the end to Revolutions, is this big bright sun comes out in the Matrix. Well, we need that to happen in the real world too. So now that brings me to my thematic predictions. So this has to do with my overall, you know, some of the topics that I think that they might touch on. Let's get the first obvious one out of the way. Transgender and transformation, transition, all of that. No, I, I, Neo is not and will not become a transgender individual. That is not his story. But I also think that we are going to introduce some gender non-conforming characters and stories. And the reason why is because in the original Matrix, the Wachowskis wanted the character of Switch to be a transgender individual. And now this is an opportunity to take the seeds of that concept. And, and now because we're living in 2021, it's a very different world than 1999 was. Those themes, I think, could be extremely powerful in a film like this because it deals with, you know, going beyond and pushing the boundaries and even just the whole idea of, of, of a real world versus a virtual world and, you know, that being thematically relevant to a lot of uh, people who um, see themselves a different way or maybe project themselves a different way in the virtual world. And generally, we're going to see a world that is more free of gender rules and um, now this is a matrix in which you can transform into anything that you want to be you know uh, maybe you can fly maybe this is uh, maybe the matrix now will not become a world of rules but it will become a rule of a world of infinite possibilities that'd be a really fun matrix to visit frankly now that brings me to my second theme and that is progressive versus traditional for example, today's political climate, um, there are a lot of divisions in our point of views, and there are some people who want things to stay the same. There's people who want passionately for things to move forward. And in the very first Matrix, Morpheus says, 
that some people are so dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. So that's what I mean with the conflict. There may be people who love the Matrix so much or love their the way that their lives are already that the idea of someone wanting to take them out of the Matrix or change the Matrix would be something that they wouldn't um, want to do want to do um, again kind of similar to you know being maybe conservative versus liberal or whatever what does freedom look like when we all can respect each other and um, give each other the freedom to be who we are so now finally the third thematic prediction I have has to do with technology and artificial intelligence today we have virtual reality uh, we have weaponized AI, we have robotic workers, um, and all of this technology and the everything is just rapidly reshaping our actual modern day world. So it would, it would frankly be a missed opportunity to not address and compare what AI is how how AI is actually important. We can't just shut down AI. We need it. We we need it in our real world, and I think in the Matrix we will, uh, they will need to still depend on on machines. I think the film is going to address the ultimate question of, what does the symbiotic relationship between man and machines actually look like? Um, and before it was destructive. That's what we saw in the first three Matrix films, but now, uh, in this future world, maybe we can find a way where man and machine can coexist peacefully. Now, finally, I want to talk about my philosophical predictions. So to do this, let me address a little bit about some of the philosophical concepts in the first three films. In the first Matrix, this it was about Neo's coming out slash realization stage, um, about him waking up and learning about the truth and being able to bring peace to himself. He's able to create internal change. That's sort of what the first Matrix is about, is just Neo's personal transformation. Then you get to Matrix Reloaded, and this is Neo's exploration and discovery stage. And he's confused. He's trying to figure out how his new reality works and how he can create external change. And then finally, we get to Revolutions, this is Neo's self-actualization and enlightenment stage in which Neo and Trinity, um, they kind of work together, are, are able to bring peace to man and machines. They are able to actually create external change. So finally, we now get to Matrix Resurrections. This is Neo's creation slash legacy phase in the first Matrix Morpheus re foretold of the one who could reshape the matrix uh, the way they saw fit. And so I think it'd be really cool to finally sort of fulfill that original prophecy of Neo being in Trinity, being able to um, shape the future. Neo and Trinity, I believe, will teach both man and machine to reach their full potential. Um, in my last video, I said that we are all the one because all of us has it within us to do soul, to soul search and to do the personal work to find the most, you know, find what's in our hearts. In the end, Neo and Trinity, I believe, by the end of the film, uh, after they have come back, they have conquered the conflict. They've they've given the keys to the kingdom to the next uh, group or whatever, and have helped shape the future. I actually do think that the most appropriate ending to this whole thing is for them to return to the source. Their legacy is what gives them immortality. Neo and Trinity will live on forever. I have no idea if that's in the Matrix or, or just in spirit, but their legacy is what will live on. 
And I think maybe the takeaway message from this film could be that we have all have the same ability to leave a legacy and to express um, that joy that's within our heart with others and, and make an impact and make a difference. So this was, uh, again, way longer than I think I I wrote out this whole page of notes. Uh, but I, uh, I'm really excited for the film tomorrow. I hope that I, I kind of hope that I'm completely wrong just because then it'll be far exceed my expectations. But whatever happens, you know, I'm extremely grateful to the, the creators and the cast and the crew um, for making something so thought-provoking, something that has definitely been a splinter in my mind for a very long time. And I'm planning to make a reaction video. If you want to see more of these film related content, please let me know in the comments. And until next time, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later. Okay. Bye.